Come to Los Angeles. The sun shines bright, the beaches are wide and inviting, and the orange grove stretch as far as the eye can see. There are jobs aplenty, and land is cheap. Every working man can have his own house, and inside every house, a happy all-American family. You can have all this, and who knows, you could even be discovered. Become a movie star, or at least see one. Life is good in Los Angeles. It's paradise on Earth. <laughs> That's what they tell you anyway. Because they're selling an image. They're selling it through movies, radio, and television. It's the 1950s era Hollywood of LA Confidential. Patchett's running whores. Cut to look like movie stars. The man for dirt and scandal hasn't been this high in America for centuries. Only the Puritans of New England from Hawthorne's classic The Scarlet Letter really compare. But it's The Scarlet Letters and pictures of Confidential magazine that goes on to inspire the film's name. <laughs> At its peak popularity in 1955, Confidential's owner, Robert Harrison, makes half a million dollars an issue. That money relies on a steady stream of information, gossip, candid photos, and stolen evidence. To keep those sweet scoops flowing, Confidential magazine utilizes intelligence networks, fronts, surveillance, informants, and blackmail. As Danny DeVito's character, Sid Hudgens, says in the film, it's all very hush-hush. The genius of the movie is within the midst of this non-fictional mid-century mania, it constructs a mind-bendingly convoluted story full of conspiracies, police corruption, institutionalized racism, double crosses, adultery, and more than a couple of murders. Nearly every one of its characters is a world-class liar. Seeing the many competing interests and parallel plot lines converge and conflict is the kind of great fun that once was only possible in movies. It takes dutiful attention to its nuanced performances and narrative structure over multiple viewings to solve every mystery. The video game most associated with LA Confidential is 2011's LA Noir by Team Bondi and Rockstar. But 12 years earlier, in the MGS2 Grand Game Plan document, Hideo Kojima of 1999 writes he envisions MGS2 as, quote, a game iteration of LA Confidential, end quote. The basic thesis MGS2 and LA Confidential share feels especially relevant today. What they both convey is that real power lies in systems of information. People are more interested in fiction so long as the fiction's more interesting, so long as the actual truth is kept. Very hush, hush. To me, the flatness of the cargo elevator hit by bright sunlight resembles a stage, emphasized by the simultaneous name and face reveal. This theatrical entrance declares Raiden's independence He's his own character, but he remains a solid snake surrogate, to be sure. Notice, Raiden reveals his face and reaches the face of the Strut A surface all at once. So too has the transition from the tanker-like docks area to the full view of the Hudson Bay at daytime felt like a reveal being made, not to mention mimicking in miniature the game's own identical jump in surroundings between chapters. This intention is actually spelled out point-blank by the description in MGS2 script. Quote, The clear day cannot offer a more radical contrast to the tanker chapter. End quote. 
Each of the hexagons connected end on end forming the filtration plant are comprised of a central core, six surrounding struts, and six connecting bridges. An additional bridge links the shells together. The strut names correspond to letters from the English alphabet. In the time it's taken Raiden to reach the strut A roof, a unit of Navy SEALs landed on B and C. Raiden and SEAL Team 10 may share the objective of rescuing the President, but as this shot from the opening conveyed, the two operations are on separate ends of the Special Forces spectrum, overt and covert. It's standard today for Special Forces across the military to work together in so-called joint operations. But nothing about the Big Shell incident is normal. Raiden's mission is so top secret that not even the SEALs have need to know clearance. This is what, in the real world, they call a covert as well as clandestine op. Information on Raiden's presence, who he works for, and what he's doing, it's all highly classified. Essentially, this operation has all the signs of a special activity. Do we really have no line of communication with the SEALs? They don't know a thing about us. You know we work in the dark, and this mission is no exception. Only a few people know about your presence here. <sighs> There's no need for concern. This operation is under Pentagon's direct command, and the NSDD came from the Vice President and the Secretary of Defense. Your mission may be top secret, but it's gone through the usual channels. Other than the President and a small number of other higher-ups, no one in the world is supposed to know about it. So, while the commandos search for the President openly and in full uniform, Raiden, clothed in high-tech gear of unidentifiable origin, focuses instead on sneaking around in search of Strut A's network node by himself. Logging in reroutes the area's data stream to the Soliton radar, so it's the first thing you'll want to do in a new area. The nodes are a great new gameplay feature that reflect MGS2's interest in the information networks and connectivity of digital technology. The nodes also advance the basic premise of MGS as a spy game, since hunting them down actually feels like reconnaissance work. Colonel, I've located the node, but it's under heavy surveillance. I can't get in any closer. Losing an always active Soliton radar brings gameplay changes as well. MGS2 repeatedly forces the player to rely on sight and sound in the field. Coordinating senses with Raiden, like vision, hearing, and sensation, thanks to the AP sensor that vibrates the controller in the presence of a nearby enemy, makes MGS2 more immersive than suspenseful, especially since it's much easier for things to go wrong. Fortunately, you won't trigger an alert unless the sentry gets a complete sentence in to his radio. That gives you a big window to correct the problem. But the best thing about nodes is how your surroundings are no longer primarily cosmetic. MGS2's environments each present a unique set of tactical considerations and dimensions, thereby more closely fusing together level design, backstory, and 3D gameplay. Speaking of environments, I can't praise the Big Shell's detailed interiors highly enough. Every area and strut has a clearly conveyed purpose, every surface, ceiling, and floor has been designed with careful and unique considerations with few assets recycled. This first interior, for example, is the strut A pump room control center. Nowhere else in the Big Shell looks like this. It's the place where, after the large piles visible on the Big Shell's outside perimeter, draw up crude oil contaminated seawater from the quarantined area inside the oil fence, these computers monitor and control the process of pumping it through the facility towards the Strut D sediment pool. Clearly a great deal of thought went into the Big Shell's design. But this attention to detail also extends to MGS2's codec calls, which are more context-sensitive and numerous than ever. Uh. 
Got one, I see. Don't leave him lying around. Hide the body as soon as possible. Usually, the responses will vary depending on where you're looking, what you're holding, and what you're doing. Some information is buried deep, requiring several codec calls to discover. Colonel, I remember this place. Of course you do. This is level one from the VR missions. And new information unlocks as you progress through the story, and some contacts will be more candid than others. Jack, do you remember what day tomorrow is? That again. I'm sorry, but I still don't have a clue. That's okay. What is it, Rose? Talk to me. I'd rather you figure it out. It's important. In fact, there are story-relevant details you can only uncover by exhausting all of MGS2's optional codec conversations. Jack, I did a search on the big shell. That's an explosive increase in missable content from MGS1 to 2, an amount which becomes standard for later MGS games. That's part of why I replay them continuously. And even for sane players, this reservoir of optional codec content makes the game better. It lets you decide how much beyond the basic story that you want to know. Besides giving more flexibility to different kinds of players like this, the optional codec call sequences create a gameplay mechanic out of searching for information. Pretty damn cool considering abundance of digital information in the 21st century is one of the game's central topics. Rose, there's something I need you to do as an analyst. What is it? It has to do with Solid Snake. The leader of this takeover incident is claiming that he's Snake himself. The legendary mercenary? Hmm. I need as much data on him as possible. Everything they have on him after the Shadow Moses incident. Today, the MGS2 method of using optional content for optional depth has become the industry standard in story-focused games. It's one of the more innovative ways the MGS series blended together traditions between interactive and non-interactive mediums. Gameplay-wise, MGS2 is more on a rail than a typical modern game, but much less so than MGS1. Level progression in MGS1 moved more or less in a straight line, with a few backtracking sections. On the big shell, things can move in multiple directions and arrive at the same endpoint, literally, not only in terms of how you play, but the direction that you get around in. The complete circuit of Shell 1's map may not open for a while, but you already have a choice of what direction to take. Pause to bring up the map, and you'll notice the right-hand path leads to the Strut F warehouse. Go here first, and you'll find the tanker mission's M9 fairly early on. Though, as an added challenge, you can't access the Strut's node right away. Getting the M9 early requires you rely on your naked eye. The only question is, how did the M9 get here? Right, I see you found a weapon. Why are there weapons here of all places? The big shell is supposed to be just a facility for marine filtration, right? The terrorists probably brought it in with them. Dunno. Looks like it's been here from before them. What are you saying? Raiden, there is no time for armchair theories. Concentrate on the task at hand. Roger that. Wait a second. I just intercepted new intelligence on the operation being executed by SEAL Team 10. Intercepted? As I said before, they need to be kept in the dark about our presence. So we just listen in. I'm patching it through. This is Alpha Zero. We have the president. Is he safe? He is safe. What about the package? Tell the guys upstairs that we've secured the package. Easy money. Good work. Your retrieval is on the way. Come on home. Roger that. Holy! Alpha Zero, report. Damn it, cover the president! Come in, Alpha Zero. This is Alpha Zero. We're under attack. This is crazy! Is that... Alpha Zero, respond. All Alpha, respond! Raiden, the president's life is in danger. Head to Strut B now.